Donald P. Jennings, well known as a pagan and a heathen, and he used to be president of the Pagan Federation, which is a sort of umbrella organisation that covers Europe. Yeah, one of the things that um, I'm known for is running ghost tours in Ipswich for about 20 years. My mother told me a ghost story of her own when I was about 12 or 13 years old, and so I've been fascinated with them ever since. Difficult to tell what ghosts are, you know, the only way to really know is to be dead yourself, I suppose, but um, some people say they're, you know, a, a vivid event that's replaying itself from the past. Some that it's sort of spirits of people who for some reason are hanging back behind because you know, they don't know they're dead or they've got a story to tell, they want to tell somebody um, that maybe their death wasn't quite how people thought it was. I really don't know and I'm happy not to know, really. Got to my teens, usual bullshit teenager, started questioning things, but um, always thought that, you know, whatever religion or whatever beliefs people have, they normally believe in some sort of afterlife and thought, oh, there's got to be something to it. And I think one of the things that I missed with most of the main religions a, was that they didn't seem to relate much to the natural world. And although I was a townie coming from Ipswich, um, I liked to be out in woodlands and shores and things like that. And the other thing was that they, they seemed to really put women in a second place. You know, they were always the sort of add-on, the, the sort of second choice. And that felt wrong to me. Eventually, um, I got interested in the pagan group of religions, you know, which can include anything from druidry to witchcraft to shaman, general pagans and so on. Paganism is the old religions that were here before the big ones like Christianity and Islam and Hindus and so on. Because the thing is with paganism, there's no big book, there's no one authoritative figure like the Pope or an Imam or anything telling us what to do. We actually have to work it out for ourselves. But we've got to relate that to a modern world. Pagans tend to try and work to the natural cycles of the moon uh, and so on, but it has to mean something to you personally. So you won't find one ritual being done by everybody. Everybody really makes their own and um, allies themselves with gods and goddesses that personally mean something to them. I'm known as a heathen, which is somebody that follows the Anglo-Saxon and Norse um, mythology and so on. Um, but I honestly feel that I have more in common with other pagans than dividers. People are starting to argue sometimes that paganism is mainstream because in the census over the last few years, the numbers have gone up and up. If you take the various branches of paganism and add them together, they add up to, to a bigger number in England and Wales than a number of Buddhists. So, you know, probably about the seventh biggest religious grouping and also the fastest growing, which is really <laughs> a bit mysterious because we're the one religion that don't believe in proselytising. I think we've got a generation now brought up in the 60s and 70s where environmental concerns have had quite an impact and to a certain extent some of the major religions have missed a trick in as much as they haven't related their spiritual practices to preserving the natural world and, and honouring it. As a pagan I get great joy from my religious past but I wouldn't wish it on anybody because it can also be quite difficult because of that fact of not having anybody to guide you, having to guide yourself. Um, but as an individualist, probably slightly eccentric or whatever, um, you know, it appeals to me, it's right for me.